Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho with KissAnalog.com. Today, go over really quickly the scope compensation. Seems simple, it is simple, but I'm going to show you how to be really precise on how you compensate probes. You don't need to do it very often, so let's do it right. Okay, uh, have the Siglent oscilloscope and got a couple scope probes, but we're only going to compensate one and you can. Uh, it's just a demonstration on how to do it very precisely, so you'll be happy with the results. Okay, so what we have here is a Siglent two-channel scope. So we have two scope probes. We're going to demonstrate this on one scope probe, and you can do uh, the same thing on both probes, obviously. This scope probe here has the yellow collars, both ends. You don't necessarily need to match up the colors with the scope, although it makes it easier. Um, when you have two scope probes hooked up to your scope, even if they're both compensated, and you're looking at a circuit, you want to quickly look it up, your, up your scope and know which scope probe you're looking at. So that's why the colored colors um, match on both ends, so you can trace your probe. Um, in this case, we're going to have a yellow one for the channel one and a pink one for channel two. Now, the other thing is there could be a slight compensation difference between the two, so it's nice to have it calibrated um, for the channel you're going to have it plugged into. And of course, you can do this all the time to uh, compensate your probes. Now, uh, these scopes, these probes, do not have the little pin, the little indicator. Um, so if you have times one times ten probe, it does not switch your scope over automatically for that. So you want to be cognizant of that. Um, so anyway, let's plug that guy in, channel one, and we'll connect this up to the calibration, calibration slash compensation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this ground probe here might give you a little bit lower noise. It's not really required because you have the ground pin in your, you know, the, this outer jacket is the ground connection right here, which connects to the outer shield here. The inner pin's your signal. So, ground's already connected. Connecting it here might help noise, but since we have a nice clean signal, in this case, I don't think it really matters, but we'll hook it up anyway. Okay, now what I like to do, this scope has a really nice auto setup feature, so you just hit that. And so here we've captured um, the signal. It's usually a one kilohertz signal, and the frequency counter says one kilohertz. So just to familiarize ourselves with the, the display here, right here I'm showing uh, the auto setup uh, triggering waveforms and um, and this is the frequency counter it's set up for five mega samples per second right now 14k points uh, rising edge channel one DC coupled this 1.5 volts is a triggering voltage um, that's this line right here or this arrow it's pointing at the center of graticule automatically sets it to the center as well as the horizontal scale, it matches up right here in the center grid. Um, down here is the 500 millivolts per division to go along with our voltage scale here. And that one, two, three is one and a half volts. So it's three volts peak to peak. This down here I've got set up for measuring peak to peak. It's in 3.64. So right now the probe is overcompensated so it's overshooting and settling down and then coming down here and undershooting and then settling so 3.64 uh, volts peak to peak right now so we're going to adjust that so we get a nice flat compensation now obviously um, one, one more thing to note you need to have the scope probe set in times 10 times 1 it does not work. It shorts out your compensation components in here. Um, what you're doing is you're compensating the filtering circuit, the, the uh, capacitors in, in the scope with the uh, capacitor resistance network that's in the probe. 
So, um, what we do is we find a little hole in the side of the probe here, carefully put this in. This pot potentiometer does not turn, it's actually, I think, a capacitor we're adjusting. So see, the quick thing to do is just do that and go, okay, it's square and we're done. But what I want to do here in this video is just show you how you can be really accurate and make sure you got a, a, a good square signal. Often when you're, when you're looking at signals in your circuit, you're going to be zoomed in both in time base and in uh, voltage amplitude. So you want to really make sure that that's square on top. Right now we're kind of zoomed out. And so it's kind of hard to see. So what we do is um, zoom this in. Hey, one thing I want to do before I show you this, when I hit this all set up and I said trigger set those things up. Um, so, you know, you can come over here and move this level adjust and change that if you want to. And you can see the line. And what's really cool is it first of all, pops up the line showing you where your trigger level is. And the other really cool thing is it actually shows you the voltage level right here. I think that's a really cool feature. Now, if you come down here and you want it back centered again, all you have to do is push this button in and it automatically centers it because it goes to 50% of your waveform. So you just push that in, presto. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in vertically. We're gonna move this adjustment knob here and there's the center of our signal you can see the trigger level there we come on down come down 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 maybe I zoomed in too too much I think I may have let's zoom out a little bit okay where am I so it's always great when you lose track of where you are um, I, I was at 500 now I'm at 200 millivolts per Okay, so there it is. What I'll do is I'll bring it down so it's even with this graticule line here. And it's right there I can kind of line it up. But now I can also stretch out the horizontal. And see, it looks like it goes up a little bit. So once you zoomed in, you can kind of tell. So you can come in here and play around with this thing and, and tweak a little bit more. Now if you really spread this out, so you can watch to see where it comes up, it gets hard to tell sometimes where, where it settles. So there's a little trick here I'm gonna show you. You come to trigger setup, and let's see, setup here. And where am I? Uh, right here's the uh, slope rising edge selection. When I bring this up, I can, change it to falling edge now there's my falling see it's nice and square it's right on top of that line and then I can go down to this other one it's called alter and alter alternates between rising and falling edge rising and falling edge and so now I can have a visual of my my uh, the end of this waveform on this side so that's kind of a cool thing now you can change this time to see when they come and hit each other and they should be square. And you can see that this one's up just a touch still. So, I mean, this is what I'm talking about, just being precise. This little um, variable capacitor, this little um, adjustment I'm making, is very sensitive. So once you make the adjustment and you let go, it kind of settles. And so there you go. Looks like it's nice and square. That's how you can zoom in both vertically with your vertical amplitude scale and horizontally with your time scale to zoom in and get a nice good picture and make sure that things as square as you can. Okay, that's it. Now if I come back to auto setup, there we go. All right, so uh, that's it. I think that kind of demonstrated how to zoom in and get a little bit better measurement there. Okay, thanks guys. Give me the thumbs up if you like that. And we'll see you next time.